hey, it's what we do here. Um, so I caught this article on The Verge uh, where Chris Hemsworth's app called Center, you know, C-E-N-T-R, um, has been charging people when they weren't meant to. So it's one of those typical apps where you sign up for a free trial and when, when it's over, they charge you a lot of money to keep using the app. In this case, it's 99 US dollars after six weeks of, uh, of, of having free content. Um, but apparently they just start charging people, you know, even before the trial is over or even when people canceled their accounts, they were getting charged. It was a huge mess. A lot of hate on Instagram, Twitter. Um, there's a couple of examples now I'm showing on Twitch. Um, you know, Brookie, Brook IEK2323, I just got charged for a subscription after canceling the program. I'm so pissed off right now. I lose my job. My, the company takes my money. I want a refund right Jesus. now. So it's all over the place. I the, the way I read this, they've got no comments, obviously, from Chris or Center, but I think it's an honest mistake. I think there must be a, you know, a clerical error somewhere. But what I started to read about was this concept of dark patents and how people configure these apps, websites, and, and interactions to trick users into, you know, spending money. Um, obviously, I, you know, was reading the comments because I was, thought it was quite funny. And I decided to look into it a little bit. So here's a great YouTube channel um, called NerdWriter explaining what exactly dark, uh, a dark, you know, uh, pattern looks like and what it is. Dark patterns are features of interface design crafted to trick users into doing things that they might not want to do, but which benefit the business in question. So there are different patterns that uh, that people use to take your money. In this particular case of Center, it's called the Roach Motel. And uh, nerd writers can just gonna explain a bit more about what, exact, what that is exactly. UX specialist Harry Brignall categorizes this specific kind of dark pattern as a Roach Motel, a design that makes it very easy for you to get into a situation, but very hard to get out. Brignall is actually the one who coined the term dark pattern in 2010, and he's been cataloging and lecturing about the issue ever since. Many of these dark patterns we're all familiar with. I only have to search my email for a few seconds to find one. For example, here, I'm getting spam emails from Architectural Digest. I scroll down and look at that. This is a mess, but it's a mess on purpose. The unsubscribe link is here, but it's devilishly hard to see. That's because it's the same font and virtually the same color as the rest of the fine print. Here's another dark pattern that uses color to misdirect. Over at the user testing blog, Jennifer Jerome points out that the mobile game Two Dots carries you through the experience by offering green buttons. A green button to start the game, a green button to pick a level, a green button to start the level, and three green buttons to continue to the next level, and so on. But once you lose a level, the color scheme changes. The first green button you see leads you right to an in-app purchase, while the continue button is just a little X that blends into the larger element. I, want I think I've watched that uh, episode already. Yeah, so I've never come yeah. across this particular view of user experience on apps and websites, and I find it really intriguing that there's a whole study on a lot of these dodgy practices. Like I've I've actually fallen for one before. Um, it was on a Supercell game. I was just, you know, opening my free chests. chests. Um, and before you know it, I, I clicked on buying 150 crystals. And because I didn't have the um, Apple iOS protection of scanning my fingerprint before buying something, bam, immediately I was charged oh. money. <laughs> really? So, or... What I also suspect happened was I like to rest my finger on the button and just play with it sometimes. Uh -huh. So okay. while I was clicking the button on my left hand, I must have just, the, the, the timing was just perfect for me to actually press the fingerprint ID on the right side. So it was like, click, click. I was like, crap. Uh, but thankfully I got refunded um, because I think, you know, people are protected from things like that. But if someone like me who understands a little bit about UX, who, you know, uses a lot of technology can just, you know, accidentally make a purchase like this, you can imagine kids or moms or dads and people who, you know, unknowingly do these things. And the fact that there are apps being specifically designed to do this, mm. I think they should all be named and shamed. Is there a ethical element to this? I mean, is it like, I feel like it's just part of business on the web. I agree. You know what I mean? 
I don't think it's yeah. ethical. I think it's moral. Um, I, mm. I feel like, sure, you can make money. Is it's a question of should you? Um, but I mean, I mean, like, uh, there's a lot of guidelines and uh, standards to say, you know, a, a website has to be accessible, right? Um, and I guess, I guess, if you're, mm, it's it's not by law though, is it? It's, you you can't. It's not illegal to have a site that's inaccessible. However, if you're a say like a big bank um, where uh, customers rely on all your services, like all customers rely on the services of that bank, um, the government can through, you know, organizations like APRA and ASIC, um, you know, have that big stick to say, yep, it has to be available for everyone. Yeah. So I don't know, like obviously, obviously well, I mean, hmm, I've got to be a bit careful here, but like, you know, banks would do this in a slightly different way. Mm. You could, you could, like, where, where would you draw this line exactly? Like, I, dark to acceptable. To gray. <laughs> um, yeah. In the case of Two Dots, they were using colors to trick the mind into making a Pavlovian mm -hmm. response. And it, what's also oh, scary. You might have to explain that one day. I, I actually know about it, the Pavlovian, <laughs> to do with so, dogs, right? Correct. So, Pavlovian response, yeah. uh, Pavlov, poor dog in the 70s, um, there was an experiment being done where the dog, they would measure how much the dog was salivating based on this experiment they did. So there was a light that went on and food would be given. They did that over and over again. After a certain point, they just showed the light and the dog just went, you know, would salivate. I'm not going to tell mm. you how they measured that salivation because it was cruel AF. Um, so what they're doing here is green, green, green button, green button, green button is good. All of a sudden, you know, purchase something is also a green button. You get tricked into it. You click on it, you buy it. Yep. It becomes a Pavlovian response. What is scary is there are a lot of companies like banks who now have behavioral science teams who understand these concepts. I'm going to believe that a lot of these behavioral teams do the good thing, do the right thing, helping people remember, helping people, um, you know, financially, you know, better themselves. But I swear to God, there are a lot of companies out there who probably use these behavioral teams for different purposes that are immoral. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're also at an age where, um, you know, obviously machine learning will actually set up these experiments automatically and mm -hmm. just tell the business, actually, you know, green, green, like we just tried green just randomly because it's a random color. Mm -hmm. And that works. That, that drives more sales. Therefore, this experiment wins. So it, it could be like that as well. And yeah. like to me, I mean... Yes, that's and and maybe I am too close to this industry <laughs> to to say so because uh, yes, it is a gray area. Um, I think there's definitely like actual nefarious, uh, you know, practices by tricking people. Um, but getting a sale is, you know, at the end of the day, it, it is kind of like trying to trick people without being upfront about it, maybe. Yeah, and, and you know what, like, it happens all the time, right? Like, you know, the, the moving the buttons and moving the prices, and there's so many theories about, you know, if you go from lowest price to highest price from left to right, but then you put the highest price in the middle, mm. or the middle price in the middle, and things like they've tested everything, and, you know, human minds aren't super complex. Um, it's quite yeah. easy to trick us. Um, but no, I... Just, I um... Yeah, it's, uh, sorry, you finish. No, you I just say? I had a really good sort of you know time looking into this, and uh, yeah. I, I like I like you know what this does for the show as well for the podcast. I feel like you know we cover a lot of recent events at the beginning of the show, and we can chat about more in depth topics like this. Uh, hmm. And uh, it'll be interesting to see you know what what else we can cover in future shows. That's right. Uh, more of the same, please, Kelvin. I like mm. that one.